It's given to us more challenges, amen? amen? And more opportunities at the same time. Shall we all stand and let us read in the book of First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 to 14. First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 to 14. Let us read this in unison. Are you there, Po? Amen. Okay. First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 to 14. Please begin. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God assisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God, wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so that Marcus, my son, greet you one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you once again for uh, uh, bringing us in this place, uh, for the opportunity to study your word once again. I pray that you will uh, give us uh, the understanding and enlighten us, Lord, this morning. May the Holy Spirit will continue to teach us. Lord, please help me as well as I uh, teach to you people. Guide me. This is all as in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. Okay, so, you know, in this uh, chapter, you know, we can see uh, how Apostle Peter uh, challenged and admonished us to continue even though we're in the furnace. Now, fire trials are always uh, present. Now, wherever you go, trials will always follow us. Now, I will not go, uh, I will not take long of my introduction, but uh, let me uh, share to you a message this morning entitled, God's Challenges in Difficult Times. Amen? Now in verses number 5 to 7, as we go there, the Bible tells us, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, ye, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God is to the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, amen? Therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, first challenge that God wants us to do in difficult times. Number one, be humble. Amen? Now, he had already here admonished all the saints here to be submissive to the government authorities. Now, we can see that in the book of, of 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. Let us go there, please. And 2 Peter, Peter chapter 2, verses 13 to 17, it says here, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of men for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. So, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. 
as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So, it is our responsibility as Christians to be uh, good citizens. Amen? And that is our responsibility, submitting to the government. Unless, now we have to take this note, unless they order us to do something which is contrary to the word of God. Amen? Now, Apostle Peter also uh, told us here that slaves to submit to their masters. Now, we can uh, read that on 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 to 25. And also wives to their husbands. Amen? Wives to their husbands. Now, but not only wives to their husbands, but uh, if you're going to uh, read the Bible, there's an instruction there that tells us submitting one to another. Amen? Husbands and wives should submit one to another. And also we are also commanded all the believers to submit to God and to teach, uh, I mean, and to each other. Now, here in verse 5, it says that the younger believers should what? Submit unto the elder. Amen? The younger believers should submit to the elders. Not only because of their maturity, eh? not only uh, out of respect for their age, but also for the respect of their maturity or let us say, spiritual maturity. Amen? Because not only sen a senior saint is a mature Christian, of course. There is a, what we call quantity. I am talking about the, uh, the, the certain amount of years uh, is no guarantee of quality experience. Amen? But this is not also to suggest that the older church mem members uh, run the church and never listen to the younger ones. Because younger ones can also... Uh, uh, give some suggestions, especially if it is uh, in accordance to the Word of God. That's why too often in the church, there is a, uh, a so-called misunderstanding between the old ones and the younger ones. But it should never happen. Amen? It should never happen into a particular local church. Now, another thing. We have to understand that there is a solution here. Twofold solution. It says here that all believers, young and old, should submit to each other. Amen? Amen. We should submit to each other. It's very... Uh, you can see the phrase here in verse 5. Ye all of you be subject one to another. Amen? All should submit to God as well. Now, take note here. The next phrase here in verse 5. And be clothed with what? Humility. And this is the answer to our problem. Be clothed with what? Humility. Amen? Amen. If there is a misunderstanding in the church, excuse me, <coughs> there's a misunderstanding in the church. Now, the Bible tells us to be clothed with what? Humility. So, the same thing as what Jesus laid aside, no? His outer garments to put, uh, and put on a towel to become a servant. So each of us should have a servant's attitude and to minister each other. Amen? Now we can read that in Philippians chapter 2 verses uh, 1 to 11, but we're not going to go there. We, we have to understand that true humility is described in this book, in this chapter, and in these verses. Take note that humility is not demeaning ourselves or thinking poorly of ourselves. But it is simply uh, not thinking of ourselves at all. And that is humility. Be clothed with humility. And we can never be submissive to each other until we are first what? Be submissive to God. Amen? Well, Peter quoted that in Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, verse 34. Let us go there, please. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Amen? So, to defend this uh, point here, uh, there's also a verse that is quoted in James chapter 4, verse 6. Let's go there, please. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, 
God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That's why it takes grace to submit to another believer. It takes grace. But God can give, can give that grace if we, if we what? The Bible tells us, if we humble ourselves before Him. And that is very important. And that's the reason why that many people okay, are not doing this. No? Now this is also the reason why God is the proud because God hates the sin of people. No? The sin of particularly the pride. Proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 to 17. These six things doth the Lord hate, yes, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hence that shed innocent blood. It was also the, the reason, because of this uh, pride, that uh, destroyed Lucifer as well. We can read that in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. It, it was his desire to be like God that steered also uh, Eve to take the burden of the fruit in the Garden of Eden. That is the pride of life. And also, this is the evidence of worldliness. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Let us go there, please. The pride of life. For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's why someone who, who lives for superiority over others, thinking that they are uh, higher than others, they are superior than others, they are thinking that they are uh, better than other people. And that is pride. That is why the only antidote to pride is None other than the grace of God. Amen? Everybody has a pride. And we cannot deny that. And, if we, and we receive that grace only when we yield ourselves to Him, to God. We can only have that grace. And that is the evidence of that grace uh, that we yield also one to another. Submitting oneself to another. That's why submission is an act of faith. Amen? We are trusting God to direct in our lives and to work out His purposes in His time. That's why there's also another danger in submitting to others because they might take advantage on us. But take note that but not if we trust God and if we are submitted to one another a person who is truly, truly uh, yielded to God and who wants to serve his fellow servants or fellow Christians would not even think of taking advantage to Christians or unbelievers. It could be saved or unsaved. Amen? Why? The mighty hand of God that directs our lives can also direct in the lives of others. That's why the Bible tells us here, Humble yourselves, verse 6, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. No? In due time. Take note here, the praise in due time. Here in verse 6. Why? Because God never exalts somebody until that person is ready for it. Take note of that. No? Take note, first, the cross, the cross here. Then second, the crown. First, that person will experience suffering, then glory. Now, the same thing as what happened to Moses. Everybody knows that story, right? Eh? That uh, Moses was under God's hand for about 40 years, you know? in the wilderness before God sent him once again to deliver the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It takes time. Amen? It takes time. And the same thing as what happened to Joseph as well. 
uh, Joseph was under God's hand for at least how many 13 years before God lifted him to the throne. It takes time. So one of the evidences of our pride is this. Our impatience with God. Being impatient. And that is the mark of our pride before Him. And one reason for suffering is that we might what? learn patience. Now let's go to James chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. James chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may, that ye may be perfect and enter wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, bountifully, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toes. That's why here Peter is referring to words he heard here. Now, we have to understand that having this pride of our lives will not make us good. Amen? God always uh, is always uh, asking us us here to be humble. Now Luke chapter 14 verse 11 the Bible tells us whosoever exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Amen? That's why one of the benefits of this kind of relationship with God is the privilege of letting Him take care of our burdens. If you have burdens, then give it to God. That's why here in verse 7, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Amen? But unless we meet the conditions laid down here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 to 6 we cannot claim we cannot claim the wonderful promise of God here in verse 7 casting all your care upon him for he careth for you now we have our worries amen you know when difficult oh, when circumstances are difficult it is easy for us to be anxious and worried and that is normal but knowing that we have a great God, knowing that God is in control, knowing that God is powerful, that He can do something in our lives, is an awkward thing for us to do. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cared for you. But if we are, we will miss God's blessing and become a poor witnesses to the lost. If we are having this kind of attitude. Everybody worried, right? Everybody is wor uh, worrying. What, what would be the, uh, what may be the outcome after this pandemic? But hey, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. We need His inward peace if we are going to triumph in the fiery trials of life. And bring glory to his name. That's why according to uh, George Morrison. God does not make his children carefree. In order that they be careless. Amen. That's why in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. We must once and for all give all our cares. I am talking about our past. I'm talking about the uh, present. I am talking about the future. Give it all to the Lord. That is very important. We must not hand Him just only a piecemeal. Why? Because keeping those cares within us, take note, 
That we cannot, we are thinking that we can handle it by our jobs. It's a d- difficult thing for us to do. Take note that if we are keeping little things, casting all your care upon him for he cared for you, take note that they will soon become big problems. That's true. Because that's our nature. Thinking that we really can do and handle these problems by our own. That's why each time a new burden arises, we must by faith remind the Lord that we have already turned it over to Him. Give it to Him. That's why if anybody knew from experience that God cares for His own, it was Peter. Peter knows everything about that. When you read the four Gospels, you discover that Peter shared in some wonderful miracles here. Now we can read that in Mark chapter 1, 29 to 31, that Jesus healed uh, Peter's mother-in-law. And also in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, uh, Jesus gave him great catch of fish as well. Amen? And in Matthew chapter 14, uh, 22 to uh, 33, Jesus helped him walk on the water. And only Peter did that. And also in Luke chapter 22, 50 to 51, Jesus repaired the damage he did. Uh, I mean, Peter, uh, during the time when uh, Jesus was about to be arrested, no. You know what happened, right? Peter took his sword and then cut the ear of Malchus. But Jesus repaired the damage he did to the ear of Malchus. And even delivered Peter to, I mean, from prison in Acts chapter 12. So God's challenges in difficult times. Be humble. Amen. So how does God show his love and care for us when we care our when we give our cares to him? Just take note on this. Number one, he gives us courage to face our cares honestly and not run away. Amen. And that is our God. Now remember, we are in his mighty hands. Remember that. Another thing, he gives us the wisdom to understand the situation. I like this. Amen. He gives us the wisdom to understand the situation. Now what happened in the past? Just give it to God. He gives us the strength to do what we must do. That's why in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13... A very familiar verse. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Another thing. Not only that, he gives us the faith to trust him to do the rest. In Psalms 37 verse 5, shall we go there please? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. That's why some people give God their burdens. And expect him to do everything. Remember that it is important that we we just let him work in us. As well as to work for us at the same time. So that we will be prepared when the answer comes. Now, in Psalms 55 verse 22. Everybody knows this verse. Psalms 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen? So be humble. Point number two. Let's go to verses 8 and 9. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. 
whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Point number two, be watchful. Sabi ng iba, sabi ng yung panonood, no? watchful. Diba? You understood it? Punlo? Watchful. Be watchful. Simply means careful. Carefully observant or attentive. This is what the Bible tells us here. Be vigilant. Now remember that one reason we have cares is because we have an enemy. We have an enemy. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, let us go there, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means as, a serp as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Remember, the verse that we read a while ago, as a roaring lion, you know, that's how the enemy was described here. Remember that Satan devoured, let's go to that verse please. Verse 8 and 9. Yeah, thank you. Now, the word Satan here means adversary. Adversary and the word devil here simply means the accuser or the slanderer. Now, the recipients of this letter had already experienced the attacks of the slanderers in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 4. Now, let's, uh, let's proceed to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Let's jump in there, please. 1 Peter chapter 4, 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Remember that suffering for the name of Christ is a blessing. I don't know if you believe on that, but that is really true. Suffering for the name of Christ is a blessing because it shows that we really are what? Following Jesus. And that we suffer because we are identified with him. This is a blessing. As I might say, uh, it's really worse. That's absurd by the real son. No, but that is the reality. And that's the truth. And now they would what? Here. As a roaring lion, they would meet the lion here in the fiery trial. Although uh, Satan was already defanged because of uh, what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. No. What he's been doing right now is still effective. Why? Because many people were still uh, uh, ignorant when it comes to the word of God. And that's the reason why the, they were being devoured by the enemy. And the same thing inside the church. Peter gave them several practical instructions to help them overcome and become uh, uh, victorious in the midst of these uh, uh, trials or difficulties. Number one, other that, be watchful. We have to what? respect Him. I'm not saying that we, are, we need to worship Him or give honor to Him. Now, our enemy, as what I've said, we have to uh, respect Him because He is dangerous. That's what I'm talking about. Amen? He is dangerous. Satan is the... A dangerous enemy. He is a serpent who can bite us when we least expect it. Amen. That's why it is very care. Uh, it is very dangerous. He is a destroyer. Abaddon and Apollyon both uh, simply means destruction and accuser. We can read that in uh, Revelations. 12, 9 to 11. Let's go there, please. Revelations 12, 9 to 11. The Bible tells us, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, 
and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Now, remember that he has great power and intelligence as well, but not compared to God, because he is limited. Now, and also he has his own host, also with the demons who assisted him in his attacks against the believer. That's why uh, Apostle Paul reminded us here also in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, everybody uh, memorize the verse, amen? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Remember that He is a formidable uh, enemy and we must never joke about Him. Amen? Or we must never ignore Him or even underestimate his ability because he's been uh, mastering this thousands of years now we must be sober and have our minds under control when it comes to our conflict with the enemy now not only that recognize him because he is a great pretender now, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. Let us go there, please. 2 Corinthians. Corinthians. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now, even uh, uh, those days, um, false teachings were already uh, uh, arising. And uh, Spreading, scattering in every churches, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Why? He is a subtle foe. Amen? He's really subtle. And we must be vigilant. This is what the Bible tells us be sober, be vigilant. And always on guard. Now, his strategy is to counterfeit whatever God does. Oh. He is not enjoying what we're doing right now. He is not happy when we are praying and when we are reading the Word of God. He is not happy when our lives in accordance into the will of God. He's not happy with that. That's why he is always doing. Okay? This counterfeit whatever God does. That's why according to the parable of the tares in Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30. Just take note if you are taking down notes there. Whenever, uh, wherever God plants a true Christian, Satan also seeks to plant a counterfeit. And that is really true. We're thinking that this, those people are really uh, serving the Lord faithfully and then uh, having those right motives. But later on, we have seen what's inside their hearts. And that is really difficult. You may not notice them because they also grow together with those real Christians. No? Counterfeit. And he would deceive us were it not for the word of God and of the spirit of God. That's why reading the Word of God is very important. You really have to meditate on it. You really have to understand uh, what is the context, what, is the, what the Lord God wanted us to have. You might be swayed. Because the better we know God's Word, the keener our spiritual senses will be to detect Satan at work. Amen? Nobody expects that to happen. No. These people might be sweet. 
As if they really care for the man of God. As if they really care for the ministry that God entrusted to them. Why? That's the counterfeit of the enemy. Now, as we go on, we must be able to try the spirits. Let's try. Let's try to examine. No, let's try to, to see. Let's try to find it out whether it's true or not. And know the true from the false. Now let's go first John chapter 4, 1 to 6. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea. Am I right? First John? First John? Yeah, sorry. First John chapter 4, 1 to 6. Yes, yes. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Amen? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. If you, remember, if you could uh, remember, Pastor Joel already explained it to us uh, uh, in one of his preachings uh, last time. And this is the sp that spirit of Antichrist whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he, what? That is in you, than he that is in the world. Amen. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. Here, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error and that is very clear another thing this is very important the Bible tells us to what resist him amen, amen. this means that we take our stand on the word of God and what we have to refuse to be moved to be moved, I mean. Now let's proceed to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. Uh, I know some of you have memorized this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This one. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the princip uh, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. May problema na mata ko. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Resist him. What's the instruction here of Apostle Paul? We have to what? To stand. Withstand. Amen? And stand, unless we stand, we cannot what? We, we stand. Our weapons are what? None other than the word of God and prayer. Let's proceed right away to verses 17 and 18. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying, this one. Always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all what saints that is very important to resist him and that is our protection to complete the armor god has what provided that's why we resist him in the faith and that is our faith in god now the same thing as what david uh he's, uh, he stood here against goliath and what? And trusted in the name of Jehovah. So the same thing. We take our stand against Satan 
in the victorious name of Jesus Christ. But take note, there's a caution here. Never discuss things with Satan or his associates. Never do that. Because this is the mistake here. Of Eve. And we know the, the sad consequences here. In Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11. But we're not going to read that anyway. Never try to fight Satan in your own way. Never do that. Resist him the way Jesus did. With what? The word of God. That's why I never get the idea that you are the only one going through in these battles. There are also other people around who are also having these battles right now. Not only you. That's why we must pray for one another. And not only that, we should not only pray, but we have to encourage one another. Amen? Encourage one another. And we must remember that our personal victories will help others as well. And other victories, or I mean, talk about the victories of others, will also help us at the same time. That's why Peter obeyed these three instructions. But again, I mean, if only Peter had obeyed uh, these instructions uh, before the arrest of Jesus Christ, before Jesus was arrested, he would not have gone to sleep in the garden of Gethsemane. Amen? Know what happened? Watch and pray. But Peter just watched movie. Now you know what happened? That's why he was able to sleep and you know what he did to Mar Malchus? And you know what he did to the Lord Jesus Christ? He denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. Amen? That's why, watch and pray. This is the warning for us. Okay? Because he did not recognize the enemy, the adversary. Okay? He did not recognize Satan when the adversary what? inflated his ego. What happened here? This is what happened here. Ego and also his pride. Watch and pray. This is very important. That's why the Bible tells us in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is what Peter and James uh, gave to us. The same formula. That's why before we can stand before Satan, we must what? Bow down before God. Peter resisted the Lord. What happened here? And he ended up submitting to the enemy. Okay? Lastly, verses 10 to 14. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Point number four, uh, number three. Not only to, uh, to be humble, to be watchful, but also to be hopeful. Amen? Be hopeful. That's why Peter closed on a positive note here. And reminded all of us that God knew what He is doing. He know, God knows what He is doing. And God is always in complete control. That's a blessing here. That's why no matter how difficult these fiery trials A Christian, as what I've said, has always hope. Now, let us uh, read this, some of these uh, things. We have God's grace. Amen? Why we need to be hopeful? Why? Because we have God's grace. Now, first, we have our salvation. Amen? Our salvation is because of His grace. 
in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 10. I'm not going to explain that anymore because it's almost time. And also in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, He called us before we called on Him. And also we ha have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen? God is good in our lives. Amen? It is really good. That's why don't, don't say that uh, uh, I think God has already abandoned me. No, no. That's not true. And also, and He also meets every situation of life. Amen? In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, we are not afraid of anything that He purposed for us. Why? Because His grace is what? Manifold. Sabi ng iba, yung money na nakafold. Diba? Manifold grace. But this, uh, I'm not talking about that. Okay? So as we submit to Him, He gives us the grace that we need. In fact, He is the God of all grace. Amen? And His grace to help every time of need as well. And He giveth more grace. That's what the Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 6. And we must what? Stand in that grace. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 12. Ibang grace itong sinasabi ko. Baka mag-isip kayo ng ibang grace. By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written, briefly exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. Not only that, our present suffering is only for a while. Amen? Amen. I really like this. That's why in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, can we go there please? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Amen? It's only for a while. It will not take long. But the glory that result is what? Eternal. That's why here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, 17, again, these are only little troubles. Okay? These are only small problems. That's why as what I've said a while ago, and the same uh, thing as what uh, Apostle Peter told us here, to what? Cast, every, cast it everything to God. Give everything to God. All your burdens. Don't carry it by your own. Amen? That's why, another thing, we know that our trials are building Christian character. Amen? We know that our trials are building Christian character. So, this is what the Bible is telling us. Here in this verse that, uh, as we go on here, uh, where am I? Here. Yeah, make you perfect. Oh, make you perfect. Simply means what? To equip, to adjust, to fit together. This is what um, the Bible tells us in Matthew uh, 4 verse 21. It is also translated as mending the nets. God has several tools that He uses to equip His people for life and service. And also suffering is one of them. That's one of them. Why? Right. Our life will not become uh, meaningful or colorful if we don't have, if we will not experience sufferings in life. No, you know, everybody wants to have uh, just a fine life. Oh, I don't want to experience problems. No, no, it will never happen. That's why the Word of God is another tool. In Second Timothy chapter three, sixteen and seventeen. No, memorize them din puyan. Alam ko po iba sa inyo. Thoroughly what? Furnished means fully equipped. That's why he uses the fellowship and the ministry of the church as well. This is very important. No? Having this kind of gathering is also very important to equip, to be equipped. No? That's why our Savior is in heaven is what? In heaven is perfecting his children so that they will do his will and also his work. Now we will end up here. In Hebrews 13, uh, 20 to 21. Hebrews 13, 20 to 21, please. Aulana. 
sign, sign off. <laughs> now I will just read here. Okay, Hebrews uh, 13, 20 to 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead oh, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the, ever, of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen? So, I hope these things will challenge us. And as we conclude here, I hope our life will be established be strengthened and be settled through the word of God. Oh, a lot of challenges, but again, praise the Lord because there's also a lot of opportunity that may arise. Amen? Let us pray. Our loving Lord, thank you once again for challenging us this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for